Hey, McCathlon Gamer, welcome back to FM24 Youth Factory. It's episode 32. Uh, last time we opened up the new season with a draw, and kind of a hard fought draw. Uh, we didn't perform terribly well, we didn't perform terribly bad, but a red card late instantly turned the tide against us, and we gave up an equalizer not even a minute later uh, in those final moments of the game. So today, well, it's our second league game of the season, but it's our third game in six days. As Thornhill's brought down in the box, that is a clear penalty. Surprised it's only a yellow card as he's through one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. It could have been far worse than that. But Lanahan Penry steps up and gives us the 1-0 lead here at home with our first goal at home this season. Pretty big crowd here, too. Of course, it's not home. We're still playing an hour and a half away as our new stadium is being built. That one deflects off the wall, off the shoulder it looked like, and out of bounds. Uh, this is our third game though. The League Cup already got underway and we had to play Fulham, who are currently in the championship and uh, managed a nil-nil draw. But as is the League Cup and a winner must be decided, it went to penalties. Mortland the only one to miss, and we lost 5-4 on penalties. Uh, so after a nil-nil drop, as here, Smith recovers. Baker Bolte just on side there, gets it back too, and hits it in the row for that. Julian should have done better on that one, I would think, but pressure should have been applied, and there was absolutely none of that. With three games in six days, there's definitely some fatigue out there. Injuries and recoveries have definitely impacted selection. And so we're not exactly looking at our top lineup as Lana and Penderese makes it 2-1. That was a fantastic goal from him here. While he's only clear to play 45, he and Davidson both. So it's going to be important that we get a lead here in this first half uh, before we end up having to sub our two key goal scorers off. Hewitt gives that one away. Not a great decision on that pass. Oh, and Lanahan Penrys does not pick up Abraham to come back with him. Oh, and then the deflection. Come on. <sighs> Poor from Lanahan Penrys in the first place to set that up. But then Webb gets a foot in there, and McFadden's just lost. He's chasing all over the place. Webb again gets a foot in, but this time deflects it in. Julian had it totally covered if Webb stays out of the way. Second half underway, Lanahan, Penrys, and Davidson are going to play maybe 10 more minutes and then we're going to get them out of there at the same time with a double sub. So Wilkinson and Atacunle, who's the other one, recovering from an injury, also fatigued. He wasn't going to be able to go a full 45 himself as he did play uh, against Fulham in the absence of Davidson. I didn't even put Lanahan, Penrys, or Davidson on the roster at all for that one. I, I allowed them to rest to hopefully get one step closer. The league was going to be much more important than League Cup, especially as we're just a League 2 side. So a uh, nice little back hill there. Atacunle fights it inside, takes it himself, and doesn't even earn a corner. It looked like it had deflected, but we don't get the call or just... Angle looked all wrong, but Abraham taking his time on a free kick. We've played 80. Gosh, just like that. Uh, Mortland. Mortland is having a rough day. Let's go ahead and bring on McCartney, who we're trying to get in. Anyway, Thornhill got the start today. Uh, we will bring on Archie Jones. Leighton Orient, by the way, is currently first place in the league after one match played. Uh, but they had a win and the biggest victory. And Leighton Orient is always amongst favorites anyway, as they are a much bigger club than uh, some of the others around here in terms of size. Jones, Atkins. <sighs> Atkins needed to take that one himself. Atakunle was already... Oh, wow, that was so close. Wilkinson nearly gets the winner as we enter uh, stoppage time. Kitchen can't win that one, Wilkinson. Gets here first, though. Brings it back down the byline. Gives it to Redknapp, who's marked tightly. Poor decision-making by a couple players there. 
And that's going to be it. It's a draw. Two draws to open the season. A little, little disappointed on what we gave away. We were definitely a better team today. We've got some work to do to merge as a contender to go up, especially if we are going to be losing players. And losing players is what we're in the middle of. We still have three that we're going to need to part ways with to adhere to financial fair play. As we are approaching the transfer deadline, I still have three guys that we need to offload. We're still just shy of 1.3 million over on financial fair play regulations. They've imposed a transfer embargo on us in the meantime, which of course we already have one anyway. That part's not a big deal. What I worry about long term is the potential of points deductions for not following FFP. So I'd very much like <laughs> To get within that but we're not going to just give players away or fire them simply because of it we're going to have to get a significant offer or something offered on the three thornhill i'm less worried about thornhill is somebody who has limited potential and is okay he's there is interest but it seems like with the kind of salary that he's making nobody that has the interest thinks that that salary is something they can really match. So we're having a hard time getting rid of him. Plus, he's been injured twice in the last few weeks in minor injuries that may or may not be playing a factor in in that. Uh, next up for us is Ollie Atkins, or Atkins. And Atkins is the same problem. He is our highest paid player. So there isn't too much interest in him going right now he has a lower transfer value for the same sort of reason so you can see both you know he and thornhill they're they're okay players with just limited potential they were players that we could hang on to for good reason but because of the salaries here we are finding a problem with that uh, atkins had one of those match highest earner things that just saw his salary rise from just over 100k to 600k in a short period of time with some of the best players bumping that thing up, 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 up. Uh, at the time of signing Atkins, he was definitely one of our best players. Now, he's not even really first 11 quality. With under a week to go on that deadline, I'm worried that we may not be able to get rid of any of those three players and hang on to them till at least January. And then fingers crossed, we don't get in some serious trouble for playing those guys deep into the season. If it's nothing more than a transfer embargo, I'm happy with that. We already have a, a transfer embargo for the entirety of this series, and it won't hurt us. What is hurting us, though, is the fact that the guys we are looking to get offers for, we are getting zero offers. The guys that uh, we want to hang on to, I'm getting offers left and right. Uh, like, Wilkinson is barely making anything, and he's got some quality, and we're getting two, three offers a day, along with Davidson, along with Sam Julian, along with Lanahan Penrace, like these four guys, uh, and Moreland. Those four, five guys, we, we are getting just nonstop offer after offer after offer. And yeah, that could get us to the mark we need to get to. But it's better players, better potential, doing more for the club versus getting rid of the guys that I feel we can manage to get by without. I don't want to lose the key guys. I'd rather hang on to them. Uh, Davidson is the most likely to be let go, even though it would hurt us. And that's because we're we're getting upwards of $4 million in, in offers for him. And I've actually started to negotiate both for Davidson and Lanahan Penrice with that possibility. You can see they, they don't have the highest potential. Letting them go won't hurt as bad. But the Davidson one hurts because he's only 19. He's not going to count against us in salary for a few years. Newcastle United have signed Brody Bick from FC Porto. He had ended up all the way out at FC Porto. Uh, we get a 2% of the $41 million, which eventually could rise to $57 million. That's 827000 That's definitely not bad. We'll take it. Happy to have it. For the first time all season, our first 11 were able to all get selection we're getting healthy. And for the first time this season, we got a win. Took four games. We haven't lost yet either, though. We opened the season with three draws and now finally a win. So six points from four played. Not a great start, but definitely not an awful start, especially when we haven't lost yet either. Sam Julian 
Julian's only at 186000 for the salary, meaning it's not going to make a big dent on our $1.29 million that we need to shed. We could do it in two players. He doesn't have to be involved at all, but well, I guess Thornhill is also on that. But I'm really ready to just move on from Thornhill, period, anyway. But on deadline day, two championship clubs, Bournemouth and Watford, have both come in far exceeding what his value was that we're not being left with much of a choice here, except that as I don't have a suitable replacement, we are 100% going to see what happens if we do the loan back and the 50% and then try to bump it up a little bit and see if they're really will, willing to you know pay something for this guy. All right, so Bournemouth back down. As for Watford, uh, they offered a little bit less on the upfront side. And they too backed down. There's still a number of other clubs that do have major interest. Pretty much a, a run of championship clubs. So we'll see who all tries to go after Sam Julian if anybody else still steps up. And no, that was it. So of five players that we tried to offload, we were only able to get rid of two. One the hard way. We just cut ties and let go of Primus. Uh, Kasongo Matumbo, we did get sold for next to nothing, just $4,000. But the key guys, the ones that made a real difference, they're still here. So we went from 1.5 down to 1.3, but we still have a substantial gap to cover and we'll continue to violate financial fair play in the short term. And we'll see if the consequences increase at some stage or if we're going to get by as is for a while. Deadline day may have come and went just yesterday, but the next day, we finally have an offer for Thornhill. Stockport has wanted him. He's wanted Stockport all along, so I'm pretty sure this deal will go through. We just had to finally get the value down low enough uh, to get somebody to pick it up. Thornhill, 33k is all. We'll get 10% of a future deal, not much, uh, and it cost us actually a little bit more on top of that for the intermediary to help us, but gone, gone. That's a big chunk of change, Thornhill, 230 or 223 that will go away. That's bringing us down to just a hair over 1 million. Thornhill's deal is confirmed, so he is heading out, and that's big progress because that, that did take up one of our big needs. Uh, Sam Julian was the alternative to Thornhill. I have... Archie Jones in place of Thornhill in the squad who outplayed him all last season anyway and now just officially has the job where Sam Julian does not have a proper backup. Koulibaly's all right and is getting better but his ceiling is less than what Sam Julian has even now. Even though Sam Julian is pretty upset that we have not accepted deals for him it would hurt a whole lot more to lose Sam Julian than it does to lose Michael Thornhill. The additional thing to look at on that is not only are they equivalent, but they're not equivalent. Thornhill was of age and counted for FFP. Sam Julian's a 19-year-old goalkeeper. He does not hurt us on FFP at all. Thornhill, not gone yet. He's he's going through January 1st. Okay, because the deal went through after after the deadline went through a day later so he's he's heading out on january the first so we actually still have thornhill available to us till january that's that's good but again at 23 versus 19 one counts one doesn't and one's not going to count anytime soon it's weird how many years we went through with the club not allowing us to upgrade coaching badges they finally have gotten to a stage where they don't care anymore uh, and are allowing us to progress. We now have a National A license. Not a huge increase, though, to our attributes. Uh, determination remains high as ever. Uh, the discipline management are in the same state. Those are unchanged. It's the coaching ones that you get a boost from that. Attacking and defending both a 10. I think we had a 10 and a 9 in those areas, so we picked up one point to one of those. The tactical technical mental all giving a bit of a boost as i don't think we had anything more than a 10 before it's amazing to me though that working with youngsters is still only a seven set piece coaching is only a two but that's also a new one in fm24 so we had nothing uh, so we picked up a one it's already now a two as bad as it was julian missed training like three times in the last few weeks but julian has now moved on he's let it go 
that he has not been allowed to sign with a bigger club and he's now happy to stay here. So that's one of our two really problematic guys already resolved and that's looking good for the uh, short term for us. We've had three losses but in all competitions. Carabao Cup, first round, lost on penalties to Fulham so we didn't even lose, exited. Papa John's Trophy, that's the under-21s one for the Premier League sides to give their reserves a chance to play meaningful games where they force lower-tier League 2, League 1 sides to go up against them, or championship sides as well, isn't it? Uh, to go up against them head-to-head, -head, requiring you to play X number of starters, like at least a percentage. We lost that one 3-0 to Ebb's Fleet. Didn't care. Went down the depth chart pretty low on that one but we have lost to fc halifax at home in this one uh going down not not performed terribly well did get a little bit fm'd we outplayed them throughout that game but uh came away with a loss other than that we've won three straight in the league prior to the just taking that loss a moment ago after we started the league with three draws so three wins three draws one loss in the league uh, up to this point. Group stage for that Papa John's trophy includes Brighton under 21s and Colchester as the other. Uh, so it's only two sides that are with us. Uh, nothing in the FA Cup coming up yet, but that's because uh, we're not going to be drawn into that for a while. But with the League Cup already out of the way, with one of three Papa John's trophy matchups out of the way, we can mostly focus on our league season, which our position is definitely improved from where it was, uh, though still not looking great 12 points from seven played three three and one plus four i think we will move up that ladder a little bit Leighton orient's on top we've already played them port vale's on top we've already played them solid home moors is in fourth we've already played them three of our first seven matchups are against top four teams the loss to halifax does hurt a little bit as they literally that was their first win of the season it's been anything but perfect I don't mind if we stall out in League 2 momentarily. It's such an easy division to escape out of, to get things under control. Playing against better opposition will help our players develop quickly. They'll get better, even if we find some struggles here early on. Right now, the biggest concern for me, hands down, is this financial fair play issue and the threat of what could come from that. If we can stabilize and improve our form, move into the playoff zone, I think it's still going to be a successful season, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if we can climb into the top three. Now, the sooner we get in form, I think we still have a better chance at still doing something this season. I mean, Leighton Orient's only four points ahead. It wouldn't be that hard to catch up to them right now. So it's still pretty early on, and yeah, the concerns are minor, mostly about the FFP stuff. Thornhill's taken care of. That's three out of five players taken care of. Now it's just two more to go. Trying to get those two maybe in a loan back situation so we can get them till the end of the year uh, would really help increase our odds. But we are dealing with the fact that a few of our guys are pretty upset right now over not accepting offers. And it is making life a little bit tougher at the moment. I think that's part of the reason why our form has been a little bit iffy to start the season that combined with the sheer number of injuries that we had to key players in those first few matches as well where we picked up all those early draws before we've now since won three out of four that is going to do it for this episode though i'm decathlon gamer like comment subscribe and i'll see you next time have a good one be safe out there bye for now